Alright yo, so this is the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650. It is currently the most popular graphics card according to the Steam hardware survey. And I can see why. It's relatively cheap, it doesn't use too much space, like this one, which is an ITX card. It has good display port outputs, like HDMI, DVI and DisplayPort. It also doesn't use any power, so it's very easy to run in pretty much anything. There's no external power connectors, as you can see. It just runs straight off the PCI Express slot. There are actually three versions of this card. So there are two GDDR6 versions and one GDDR5 version. The two GDDR6 versions have a difference of just a code's name of the chip. So one is the TU-117-300-A1 and another is the TU-106-125-A1. This one is the TU-117-300-A1, which is the GDDR5 version, and it comes in at a pretty decent cost. The default base model version of this card has 896 CUDA cores, a base clock of 1485 MHz, a boost clock of 1665 MHz, 4GB of GDDR5, and it has a TDP of 75 watts. I paid £75 for this, which is about $90, which is a really decent price for how it performs, I think. So let's take a look at some benchmarks. First up, we have Red Dead Redemption 2 at Ultra Settings 1080p. And in this, we got an average frame rate of 38.7, a minimum of 32.1, a maximum of 43.8, a 1% low of 32, and a 0.1% low of 29.7. Not too bad. Forza Horizon 5 next, at Ultra Settings with 4 times MSAA. And in Forza, we got an average frame rate of 34.7, a minimum of 27.5, maximum of 41.9, a 1% low of 28.3, and a 0.1% low of 14.9 which is pretty decent, although we did have a couple of times where a memory warning came up, so maybe the 4GB of GDDR5 is not enough for this graphics card. Next we have Starfield at medium settings, because I was worried about how it would perform, so I put it at medium. And in Starfield we got an average frame rate of 45.7, a minimum of 33.8, a maximum of 60.1 and a 1% low of 26.4 and a 0.1% low of 25.4. Okay, next up, Shadow of the Tomb Raider at highest settings, 1080p. And in Tomb Raider, we got 35.6 FPS average, minimum 31.2, maximum 42, a 1% low of 30.6 and a 0.1% low of 26.5 FPS. Next, we have GTA 5, the classic. It's an older game, but still is great to play and performs quite well on older hardware. So we got this on the highest settings with 8 times MSAA. And in GTA 5, we got an average frame rate of 38 FPS, a minimum of 26.6, a maximum of 44.6, a 1% low of 28, and a 0.1% low of 24.4, which is pretty decent, uh, considering it has 8 times MSAA enabled. Resident Evil 3 next, we got this on high 1080p with FXAA anti-aliasing on. So we got an average frame rate of 162.7, a minimum of 108.7, a maximum of 458, and a 1% low of 109.3, and a 0.1% low of 68.8. So realistically I could have turned up the settings here and we would have gone above 60 FPS. Okay, next we have Rocket League at the highest settings with FXAA on high. I can never seem to get a game in Rocket League, so in the practice mode we got an average FPS of 195.4, a minimum of 182.1, a maximum of 220.2, a 1% low of 175 and a 0.1% low of 75 FPS, which is very decent as you want high FPS for an esports game like this. Rainbow Six Siege at Ultra Settings, another esports title, let's find out how it performs. So in Rainbow Six Siege we got an average of 158.5 FPS, 
a minimum of 125.6, a maximum of 186.1, a 1% low of 130.7 and a 0.1% low of 120 FPS. This is a really decent performance for an esports title again as you want high FPS to be able to play at your optimum. And Fortnite epic settings with TSR low. We got an average FPS of 45.6, a minimum of 35.6, a maximum of 56.8 with a 1% low of 14.4 and a 0.1% low of 6.6 .6 FPS. CS2 next at high with 4 times MSAA. We got an average FPS of 112 which is pretty good for this game because it's very new and has just recently come out. Three D Mark gave us a graphic score of three three eight three, which is pretty good because it means we can play most games on the ultra or high settings ten eighty p. So I can definitely see why people use this graphics card, and it's the most popular on Steam. It's reasonably priced. It's not too expensive at just ninety dollars, and it plays pretty much all games at ten eighty p. But you might have to turn down the anti aliasing settings. So I definitely recommend you get this graphics card if you're on a tight budget. Thanks for watching.